So, the first part of the chapter 4, which is linear approximations, is the idea of partial derivatives. Keeping one of the variables constant while differentiating with respect to the other one. So, basically, there are two types of partial derivatives. You can either want the partial derivative just in general for any given point, for which you just literally take the, X, the function with x and y, hold one of them constant, and use the product rule, chain rule, dip the power rule, different stuff that you've learned in previous courses, and just differentiate, which will give you a sort of expression with x and y, which, will be, uh, which can be used to find the partial derivative at any given point. On the other hand, let's say you are given, find the partial derivative at a specific point, and they tell you what the point is, let's say 0, 0. Then, it, in most of the cases, I won't say all, in most of the cases, you will be using the definition of the partial derivative, which basically says that you use this limit to evaluate what the partial derivative will be at the point A, B. Now, if you use the regular differentiation, which might be easier in some cases, if you use the regular differentiation, gamma come up with an expression and just sub in the point a b that will yield the exact same result though this is usually easier for calculating um, partial derivatives at one specific point so the next and almost last topic of this video is differentiability i'm um, going to be going over what if you um which you are probably going to see questions on the exam like uh, is this um, is this function f of x y differentiable um, at the given point zero zero uh, the very first thing you need to do is start finding the function's partial derivatives. Uh, since if the question asks you to evaluate if it's differentiable at a specific point, um, as, as I mentioned earlier in this video, you should probably use the definition of the partial derivatives, use the limit to evaluate the partial derivative with respect to x and y, and you'll get to this part. Now, if you find that either partial derivative does not exist, immediately you know that the, um, the function is not going to be differentiable at this point. That's a given. On the other hand, let's say you find uh, partial derivatives at these two points. Um, the next thing you need to do is use the linear approximation formula from the last section of this video, which is basically um, f of a, b plus partial derivative of x time evaluated at a, b times x minus a plus the partial derivative of f with respect to y evaluated at a, b times y minus b. Using that formula, plug in all the values, you can, you can find out what f of a, b is over here and get your linear approximation. Now that you have that, you need to sub in um, into this equation over here. What basically means that you need to find what the remainder is and if it goes to zero, faster than uh, the distance or the denominator we have here. So basically, you find r1, which is the remainder. You do that by taking f of xy, which is your function, and subtracting the linear approximation that you just found. Once you get the R1, divide all of it by the, the, abs the magnitude of the distance between xy and your given point a, b. So let's say xy minus, you're evaluating the limit at 0, 0. So xy minus 0, 0, all of that, you have to take the magnitude, which is basically the square root of x squared minus 0 plus y squared minus 0. Essentially, that will be your denominator. The numerator can be calculated using this, um, and you take the limit of all of that. Now, in this limit, you use all the limit uh, sort of methods that I taught, talked about earlier in the video, um, and you see if the limit equals zero, your function is differentiable. So, let me quickly recap. You start off with your partial derivatives. If they don't exist, the function is not differentiable. If they do exist, you find the linear approximation, you then use the remainder, which is, the, which is your function, minus your linear approximation. You use this, which is the remainder over the magnitude um, of the distance between x, y, and a, b. Um, and if that limit is zero, your function is differentiable. And so the final topic I'm going to cover for this video is going to be the change rule. Unfortunately, since change rule is sort of a very, very complex topic and the examples are extremely, extremely long, I won't be able to cover it very in depth in this video, but I am going to show you the basic uh, methods of tackling problems. They do get, uh, they, they have the potential to really uh, like blow up in your face because they can become really, really complicated, but I'll try to keep them as simple as possible. So, let's say you're given a function f of x, y equals x squared, y. Simple. Now, in a, as a composition, x is a function of p and q as in x equals p plus q, and so is y. y is also a function of p and q as pq squared. And then p and q are again functions of another variable, which is t. So 
to keep. F is a function of x and y. x and y are a function of p and q, and p and q are a function of t. And to visualize this, it's very important to draw a tree diagram. So at the top you have f, it's a function of x and y. Each of x and y are a function of p and q. And p and q, all of them, are functions of t. Simple. Now, the change rule question is probably look something like find the change in f or the derivative of f with respect to t. The problem is there's sort of different levels that you have to go to to get to each of the t's. The basic idea here is you make each connection all the way down to t. Different paths from all the way to f to all the way to t. So let's say in order to get to this path, you have to take the derivative of f with respect to x, x with respect to p, and p with respect to t, and multiply all three of them together. So that would end up look, uh, looking something like uh, df over d, oh, partial derivative of um, df over dx, and it's partial because there's two variables, we're holding every, the y constant and we're differentiating with respect to x, and then the partial derivative of x with respect to p, again, because it's a partial because we're holding the cube constant and we're differentiating with respect to p, and then just uh, dp over dt, because there's only one variable, you don't, you don't need a partial derivative. dp over dt. So, we've traced our way from f all the way down to the first t. In order to get df over dt, we need to get to 1, 2, 3, the rest of the three t's as well, which will basically follow every possible path that you can see here. This was the first one that I showed you here. You have to add all the other three paths and that is going to be your answer. So just quickly telling you what this means, df over dx will be differentiating this function with respect to x, which is basically going to be 2xy. Then dx with respect to p, if you differentiate x with respect to p, you get a 1. And finally, you differentiate a p with respect to t, and p is t squared, so you get 2t. And you repeat this process, tracing your way down to every single t, and that is basically the essence of chain. So that concludes my video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you do have any still uh, have any lingering questions or still feel confused about any of the topics, feel free to leave it in the comment section below, where I will be answering questions um, all the way up till the midterm. I know I will rush through a lot of topics, but it's just because I wanted to get through a lot of them cover the major concepts so you the students can do practice on your own this wasn't supposed to be a video where I go over just a bunch of examples I really wanted to explain the method and the approach for a general problem that you might see on the midterm exam uh, thank you once again for watching leave your questions in the comment section below and best of luck on your midterm